and everyone knows what's coming. Pia double post. Pia double post. Come out and cover four. Four safeties back. Four. Someone just stop the post. Someone, you know, it's two posts. Pia double post. Stop one. Look, six guys back there. Six. Six. And walks in untouched. Yo, what's up, man, players? Man, it's 24-7 here, man. Going over a crazy rank game that I played last week in which my opponent got sick of this man, Darius Davis, dominating him. He got so sick that he decided he was going to use his outside corner the rest of the game. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Playing against this guy had me really upset. Really upset. Because he pulled out a glitch play out of nowhere. I mean, this bum pulled out a glitch play I've never seen before. Out of nowhere. Down 21 skunk in the first quarter. And to top it all off, he starts celebrating. He starts high-stepping, doing the Naruto run, doing all types of goofy stuff. And I'm scratching my neck looking. Like, yo, where was this earlier? Nowhere to be seen. Now, I'm a 21 zip. I have contains because he keeps rolling out. Not really worried about that at this point in the game. And they call this illegal contact, which I'm standing still the entire play. So I get kind of confused. Okay, I'm not really worried about that. I'm still a 21 zip. And then he pulls out this unstoppable play. I did not know this play was this good. Runs P.A., double post and my cover four just dumbs out and he gets a touchdown but wait he fumbles he fumbles at the half yard line you can go and look his body does not cross the line it does not break the plane and they give him a touchdown imagine they gave him a touchdown last weekend for that same situation imagine i've never seen anything like that this year I've been playing Madden since the start of August. And I've never seen that animation all year. This bum really waited at the one yard line for me. Like we're going to quit on the play. Like we're not hustling. Like we're not chasing people down trying to make a big time play. Make the big time play. Punch the ball out at the half yard line. The ball is rolling around. And they give him a touchdown. It makes zero sense. Now you see he's using his outside corner. And I just decide, okay, it's going to be me versus you. I'm going to put this guy on random routes. I'm going to throw the ball right at you every single play. And that's what this ball game turns into. He's chasing me, trying to beat me in a foot race with Marlon Humphrey. Throw it over his head, walk in, no. Stop at the one-yard line and go 28-7. Now, in a video that I posted last night, I'm posting daily. I was looking at the comment section. And it was this guy in there. He said, yo, man, talk. I feel like you can beat all these YouTubers. I feel like you can take their subs. I feel this. I feel that. And a guy responded to him. He said, yo, yeah, man, talk is nice. But I see him lose to this man named Thumbs for money. After I get over the shock, I tell him, yep, yep, I lost him for money. I called out his entire crew, everybody. That was back when I was on my bully stuff. That was, I was just different back then. Here you see again, first play was a fluke. I honestly thought it was a fluke. Second play again, same exact play. 75-yard touchdown right before the half, and I am disgusted. Makes zero sense. I didn't know PA double post was even this effective. I'm in a cover four. So I tell him, yeah, thumbs beat me. I lost him for money. I had no excuses back then, and I have no excuses now. Now, Thumbs, 
He got my respect because he's the only one that stepped up to the plate. I caught out his entire crew, specifically this bum name route combo. It was the same answer that a lot of these man bums tell me. Oh, I don't want to play you. You're too good. I'm scared you'll pop me. But thumbs? He said, yo, let's play. Let's play for $20. So we got the game going, and he outplayed me that game. He outplayed me. And I tweeted something on Twitter. Or should I say X? And I said, man, this bum hit me up and said he beat me in 2K six years ago. And just in case, I, I even denied it. Just in case I said, no, you did it. He was playing the video that I posted. And said, is this you? This is a video I beat you in. I had to tweet, yo, being me is a historic moment in time, bro. I hate saying it, but it's the truth. When I take losses, it's a big deal. It's a big deal when I lose. And for people that say I don't post losses, come in here and beat me. That's really all I can say because he was playing the 2K loss from six years ago. And said, you posted this. Ain't this your voice? And it's crazy because that bum is still talking trash to me now to this day. Still talking trash, saying I don't want him in 2K, saying I'm scared of playing in Madden. And it's a lot of people talking crazy. And I always tell them, yo, keep it in the messages. Keep it on the YouTube comments. And please, whatever you do, don't. Don't post your gamer tag. But here we go. It's 2814. I'm just trying to score it for the half. And I'm just putting this man on random routes. If you couldn't tell at this point, I'm just putting him on random routes, out routes, flats, hitches, curls, you name it. I say, yo, you want to use it? You're going to have to use it because I'm putting him on every route imaginable in the game. Just random routes, whatever I feel like put him on. And I've never played someone like this who uses their outside corner to this level. But you can't say this man's out here not trying. You can't say he's out here relying on a computer. He's definitely trying. He's trying to stop me. I'm trying to stop him. And it's 35 to 14 right now. Now I have a lot of trash talk games coming in the future. I've been playing just straight up clowns, characters. You got people. Man, I got people asking me for my cash app. I can't even tell you why they asked me for my cash out because it's just some clown stuff. It's I got people asking me to call them nicknames and I have to politely refuse. It's just a whole cast of characters that I have on my laptop. And it's funny because I was playing one of them and hold up, hold up. This is what I'm talking about. Clown stuff. This is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm playing nothing but straight up clowns. This man runs out the end zone. He sprints off camera. <laughs> then kicks the ball out of bounds. It's crazy. It's honestly crazy. These guys in this man community, it never ceases to make me laugh at just shenanigans. But there you see, he's on him like glue. He is determined to shut this guy Darius down. He is using him every single play. I'm not out here capping. He's not using a linebacker or safety. He's using the outside corner, and he is right there, hit sticking me. Determined. So I just keep seeing him. I try to throw it someplace else. That's locked up. So now it's fourth down and 10. And I'm kind of concerned with this man's offense because he's pulled out his unstoppable PA double post play. And I have to pull out my bench. So I come out and bench and I streak the outside dude. So he'll follow him. I catch him on the defensive line, throw it right before he sacks me. And we're able to pick up this first down. Streak X again. Get sacked. Take a timeout. Street X again. And this time, I'm throwing it to X no matter what. Second and 19. I got to get this throw off. I just flat him. I'm trying to juke and make a play happen. He sacked off. Hit the flat. Juke. Only get six yards. I 
hit him with an out route that he is on. This guy is starting to key in on my out routes, but this time I'm throwing a streak right at him. I'm going to throw a streak. I'm going to pass lead it down. It's going to be a tough play to make. Boom. Catch it on him on fourth down. Now, I went to the Washington Wizards game yesterday. Bradley Beal made his DC return. And he dropped 43 points. And it was insane to see because I went and saw Bradley Beal last year. He had an off night, wasn't really doing much, and it completely changed my opinion of him. I said, yo, you really got to go see people on more than one night because this dude, Beal, he had a step back, buzzer beating three, and everybody was cheering, man. It was his return to D.C. Everybody was cheering. Nobody heckled him. No one booed him. They played a tribute video, and it was it was dope. It was it was a real nice experience. We got to see Kevin Durant play in person for the first time. Got to see Devin Booker, and he was doing Devin Booker things, hitting tough contested shots. KD was playing out of the post. Jordan Poole's holding him, and he's hitting turnaround fadeaways, none but net. And that big three is tough. That big three is going to be tough to beat. But what I keep saying is they need a point guard. I still believe they need a point guard, and I still believe that they need a defensive set of center. Nurkic, he's good on offense, but I don't feel they need a guy like my boy Mason Plumley or a guy like maybe Zubak, just a defensive first center because Nurkic, I don't feel like he's going to be good enough on defense. And you have enough firepower, you need defensive centers. Even a guy like Bismack Biombo, I think they got rid of him. Even a guy like that, just somebody on that level. Now going to that game, I posted his step back buzzer beating three at that Bradley Beal had. I posted it on Twitter, posted it on Instagram, TikTok, all platforms. Be sure to check that out, man. Talk 24-7. And my boy, he said, yo, I'm trying to go see Kawhi Leonard tomorrow. So I was able to help him pick out some tickets to go see Kawhi Leonard because he was looking at some tickets that I wouldn't even think about looking at. Now, he was looking at the middle section and thought, that would be one of the best seats in the house. And I had to tell him, yo, you don't want to sit in the middle. You want to sit on the left or you want to sit on the right? Because when they're playing half-court basketball, you want to be able to look right in front of you instead of you're looking, you're cranking, and they're never going to be right in front of you if you're sitting in the middle. So he was able to find some great seats sitting on the left side, so, and he showed me a pregame picture, and they're right in front of you. You know, that's those are the best seats in the house. So I was able to help him select that, go see his favorite player, Kawhi Leonard, and that's what it's all about, man. Going to go see your favorite player. Players, see them in person and see if they're really as cold as you think that they look on TV. Now, this is the last play that I have. And if I wasn't there, I think this guy might have scored right there. He might have caught it and maybe fell forward. This guy's plays were very sneaky. Now, playing against this guy, as I was saying, it's very upsetting playing against something that you know is coming. I know he's running PA double post. I know for a fact. He's running PA double post. I know that he's using the outside corner. I know a lot of things that this guy's going to do. It's no trickery involved. And this second half, he does show a lot more fight than I was prepared for. He really starts keying in on Davis. And I wasn't taking him serious. But the second half, he starts to send pressure and he's using the corner. It's... It was pretty tough. It was it was pretty tough. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you guys. It was pretty tough. My stats are real nice, 16-21, 350, three touchdowns. But this guy said, no, nah, I'm not going to let you do me like this. I'm not going to let you do me like this. I mean, look at this play right here. Easy pitch and catch and just punches the ball out. Punches the ball out, which surprised me. It didn't make me mad. It, it just really surprised me. I said, okay, this guy's okay. So I send him on a zig route, sends a pressure. I don't even have time to hit that. It was fourth and two. 
As I said, this guy showed some fight. I got to give him his credit. A lot of guys would have been quit the game, would have been out. But I guess when you got an unstoppable PA double post play, that ain't what you're feeling. Now he's using and shuts me down. I try to swerve him, shuts me down, gets the interception, and everyone knows what's coming. PA double post, PA double post. Come out and cover four. Four safeties back. Four. Someone just stopped the post. Someone, you know, it's two posts. PA double post, stop one. Look, six guys back there. Six. Six. And walks in untouched, celebrating, down 30 points, getting in my head. I hate when people celebrate down 30 points because it's nothing I can do at that point. I can't. I'm already up 30. What else you want from me? I can't do more than that. I'm already up 30 points and they're still celebrating. I can't do nothing about that, man. That's why it makes me upset. Because it's just, what more do you want me to do? You want me to stomp you out? You want me to kick your head in? You want me to beat you by 50, 60, score 100 points? Now there goes my boy Joshua Kelly. And I was real high on him in fantasy football two years ago. He was one of my sleepers. I really thought he was going to dominate the game. And it was real difficult because he did it pan out. He did it pan out. I really thought he was going to be the backup to Eckler. I really thought that he was going to be the next guy up. If Eckler got hurt, Eckler went down. And it just never worked out that way. Now, this year, I didn't play fantasy football because I got kicked out the league. And... I get kicked out of a lot of leagues, and I was talking with my boy. He said, yo, you should play in a franchise mode. And I said, man, last time I played a franchise, you want to know what happened? I got kicked out the league. After one season, I got kicked out the league, and I posted the last franchise game that I played. I posted it on YouTube, and I think I titled it, This Is Why I Don't Play Franchise, or something like that. Franchise games, I just have had nothing but bad experiences in leagues, franchise games, and they always say if you're the common denominator, it might be you, and guess what? It might be me. You know, it might be me. I, you know, I'm willing to accept that I might be the reason I keep getting kicked out. I, you know, it, it, it might be me, you know, it might be me, but if something keeps happening and you're expecting different results... Y'all know the saying, man. Y'all know the saying. Definition of insanity. If I keep joining leagues and I keep getting kicked out of leagues, I'm surprised I made it to a second year in my fantasy league. I'm honestly surprised because two years, they said, no. Nah. People were saying they weren't going to play if I didn't get kicked out of the league. I won't be the commissioner if this guy is in the league. Well, if he's not the commissioner, I ain't playing. I mean, you had half the league making a stand against me and people's hands were tied i got kicked out of the league for a guy's little brother and it was real funny because they came running back begging me to rejoin the league and i said nah you already kicked me out the league they were complaining that the two brothers were conspiring and and then another guy he sat his entire team that league just completely blew up in smoke and flames and i wish i could say i was surprised but you know i was the glue that held that league together i was i was i made sure nobody was cheating it was competitive this and that and that's one of my things i posted a video yesterday we were talking about competition and what you win what you are playing for and i think that fancy lead the winner got maybe 250 $300 max, and I didn't care. It wasn't about the money. It was about winning the league. That's what it was about. I mean, you talk about the man hours, the research hours you spent playing the league. That's what I was playing the league for. It wasn't for the pot. I still brag that I want to ring in that league. I still brag about it, and the people in that league, they hate hearing me brag about it because it ain't nothing they can do. They can't take away my ring. And I always say that. So I clocked this dude. 
He made me very upset running unstoppable plays. He made me very upset celebrating down 30. So I just decided, okay, I'm just going to clock this guy, get out the game, no injuries. And that was what I did the entire fourth quarter and second half. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe for more videos. Everyone knows I'm going to keep trying to post. I appreciate all the good feedback. I appreciate all the bad feedback. I appreciate the comments on my channel. Each video, I want to be better and better than my previous video. I'm taking a lot of suggestions. I'm starting polls on my channel, asking people, what do you want? What are you looking for? And I am I keep saying I'm trying to improve the production quality of my videos. I'm not just posting a post. Each video that I'm posting, I want to be better than my last video. And um, I hope my audio sounds better than some of my previous videos. I'm experimenting with my microphone placement, moving my microphone back so that it does not clip. And just little things like that. So as I keep saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up, honestly. Legit, just getting warmed up, just getting started. And I will have my membership page done and set up. I'm starting up my Patreon page any day now. I'm just wrapping up the videos, wrapping up the production. And I'll have uncut trash talks in the membership. I'll have, excuse me, I'll have tip videos in the membership and just extras like that. I'm still going to be posting regular videos, but people have been asking for the uncut trash talks. And honestly, YouTube, they don't like curse words. And I know what people say. I've heard a lot, you know, people curse in their videos, but it's a certain amount of curse words you can say and do. And I don't know what that amount is. And it's just, once you pass that threshold, YouTube, they start hiding your videos, flag your videos, and et cetera, et cetera. So thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe for more videos, man. Everyone knows I'm a key Trump post. Everyone knows I'm posting daily. Thanks for watching.